Hey guys, David here with Vares Media and today I want to talk to you about my current favourite wide lens for the Sony a7 IV, which is the Sony 20mm f 1.8G. Now, I think the blanket best lens type statements are problematic, given how many divergently differing and decadently dramatic types of shot you might want. So, we are thinking today specifically about why this lens could be the best wide lens for things like vlogging, b-roll or cinematic scenarios. I've got five broad buckets of relevant rational reasons to recount for why I rate the 20mm so highly. But just before we dive into those, if you enjoy the video then please do like, subscribe, comment and check out the affiliate links to support the channel and keep it going. Massive thank you for everyone who does. So with that said, let's jump to our first thematic reason, particularly good potential for cinematic shots. Now, what the hell does that mean? I'm glad you asked, but watch your language. We don't f***ing curse on this channel. Oh, the 20mm f1.8 is one of just 16 lenses that currently support the focus breathing compensation feature exclusive currently to the a7 IV. So for the price of a small crop into the image, you can now execute breathing free focus pulls and racks. This is a small but really nice and relatively exclusive feature that gives you focus pull and rack focus results much closer to what you would get with a cine lens, while still benefiting from all the typical native Sony lens with Sony camera benefits, like tremendous autofocus. Continuing on this theme, the 20mm has another superb cinematic skill, which is relatively rare on most lenses, and that is a linear focus system. What does that mean? It means the same amount of movement of the focus ring will consistently deliver the same amount of shift of focus. This contrasts with many E-mount lenses where manual focus will change based on the speed rather than the distance of your focus ring movements, which is less helpful ring antics than you get with the average Gollum. The linear response of the 20mm means more replicable manual focus pulls, which are easier to mark and consistently execute, with a much more cine lens like experience. As noted cinematographer Borat Sagdiev would say, very nice. On to our second theme, and continuing our earlier Lord of the Rings references, will the 20mm provide enough focal length options to be one lens to rule them all? No. But you might be surprised by the level of focal flexibility. Obviously you get the 20mm wide view, which is what you'd expect from a 20mm prime lens, and that is great for landscapes, architecture, vlogging and the like, without straying into fisheye or ultra-wide territory. But beyond that, there is a surprisingly decent array of options thanks to a combination of Sony's support for clear image zoom, a digital zoom with essentially zero perceivable quality loss, the use of the a7-4's crop mode, and the a7-4's 33 megapixel sensor providing a high amount of oversampling down to 4K. Crop mode gives you a 30mm equivalent field of view, which is still nice and wide but gives you a slightly more focused shot, while clear image zoom lets us step through both full frame and crop mode in 10% zoom increments from 110 to 150% zoom. So in full frame mode 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 and 30 mil equivalent views, while in crop mode an additional 30, 33, 36, 39, 42 and 45 mil equivalent fields of view. Fields of view? Field of views. Whichever it is, what we can say for sure, like Brian Butterfield, is that's not all. Add active steady shot into the mix, another welcome feature addition for the a7 IV, and the 14% crop on that can extend your view even further. And the additional small crop we mentioned from focus breathing compensation earlier can also be added to get even more range. More on active steady shot and all the other a7 IV stabilization options in the stabilization deep dive video linked in the description. So will all these shots be interchangeable with a native lens of the same focus? length? No, optics don't work like that. But the point is that for field of view and framing purposes, this lens can get you from approximately 20 to about 55mm in pretty flexible increments, which is really nice flexibility for the investment you're making in a pretty expensive lens, and it's super helpful if you're traveling light or this is the only lens that you have to hand. Theme 3 is Blur E. And 
While that terrible wordplay reminds me of Christina Aguilera's Dirty, the bokeh performance of the 20mm, which is our next reason, reminds me of why I love vlogging and shooting b-roll with this lens. The f1.8 aperture is lovely and wide on a full frame sensor, and while the underlying 20mm optics limit the amount of image compression which would make bokeh even more dramatic, I think the lens strikes a really nice balance that works great for bokeh at moderate and close subject distances. The bokeh itself is smoother than the best Hollywood wax in town, but without the sudden tearing sensation, with a really attractive roll-off between in and out of focus areas, and a soft, visually appealing blur that tastefully draws attention to your focus and paints nice colours in the foreground and background around it. The 20mm also has a secret weapon of surprisingly close minimum focus distance, making it impressively capable for macro shots in a pinch, and giving you the option of extreme watercolour-esque bokeh bonanzas on close-ups if you want that shot. Is watercolour-esque even close to being a valid word? I'm not sure, but something I am sure of is the low-light capabilities of the 20mm f1.8. We covered a detailed look at a7 IV low-light recently, so do check that out if you're interested in more. But why is this lens particularly good? Well, again, the wide aperture helps a bunch. That bright aperture combines with the kick-ass autofocus of the 20mm to allow shooting in lower light without insane ISO escalation in most situations. So scenarios like low-light vlogging work particularly well. And if you're aiming to achieve big, beautiful bokeh balls, and I spam email I'll certainly suggest I should be thinking about that or something similar, then our aforementioned Bokeh Bravado provides fantastic looking results with a really smooth and pleasant finish. To be clear, there's no unique low light selling point here that other lenses just cannot replicate, but the combination of that low light performance with the other factors we mentioned previously taken together creates a compellingly comprehensive combination. What about our last theme? Well, fittingly, the fifth and final feature is favourable form factor. At 373 grams and 8.5 centimetres in length, the 20mm f1.8 is at the lighter and more compact end of the full frame lens spectrum. Plus, it's reassuringly robust. There is dust and moisture proofing that you'd want on a lens of this price, but it can also take a kicking and keep on ticking. I rarely drop anything, touch wood, but in a twist of irony, I accidentally dropped this, my most expensive lens. Thankfully, it survived and still works perfectly despite a six foot drop onto a hard surface with no lens cap, and it only has a minor ding to show for it. I sure as hell won't be testing that ever again, hopefully, but the durability is certainly a selling point. So subsequent to that saga of serendipitous survivability, it seems sensible to cease. The Sony 20mm f1.8 is my favorite wide lens for the a7 IV right now, for all the reasons that we've discussed, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, then please do like, subscribe, drop a comment, and check out the affiliate links to help keep the channel alive. Huge thank you for that. But even more importantly, until next time, take it easy.